We're starting our day here in Menton. And we're gonna go explore the city now. up to the town of Menton, like the old town part. It's very funny. The similarities between here and Cinque Terre are becoming more and more apparent as we're able to look at the town more. At the very top of the town, you can see the cemetery. In Cinque Terre, it was the same exact thing where they had the cemeteries at the top of the towns. Part of the town that has more of a medieval look to it was founded by pirates in the 13th century. Which is interesting because Cinque Terre had turrets and towers and castles and such to protect from pirates. Now we're headed up to the cathedral. So the steps are really long, like flat, and there's a ton of mini rocks just filling it in. And has a really nice view of the water right here. I wish we brought our bathing suits. In a way, it looks not nicer than the beach in Nice, but it's way warmer. The water is still really pretty blue, so maybe we'll come back tomorrow, I don't know. Menton has two different cathedrals right next to each other don't understand the difference. One looks older, one looks newer. I'm gonna figure out why that is. Menton has its own microclimate, so it's pretty warm all year round and has like palm trees and I could feel the difference in like the heat and humidity here. So what do you think the siren's about? A medical emergency? I don't know. It's really loud though. Yeah. The sirens that we were hearing, they were testing their warning system. We weren't sure what that was. The cathedral was closed, so we, we couldn't go in. And next, we're going to take the train to Monaco. Walking through this town, it kind of reminds me of Cinque Terre, which we've said before, with the colors of the buildings. It's just like 10 times as big as Cinque Terre is, at least this town compared to the different villages. So you can really see that Italian influence here as this was initially Italy over 100 years ago, and then it was turned into France. Italy is just a few miles east of here. It's not very far. This is where the old town starts to end and we get back into the more modern buildings. Menton was not exactly what we were expecting to see. It was a really cool old part of the town. Half of it was green. But the other half was just kind of all modern and not what you wanted to expect or see. But there were some really beautiful spots. So if you don't have much time, I wouldn't go visit there if you're here in the French Riviera. So now we arrived here in Monaco. And kind of first impressions, it's not a very nice place and you expect it to be a lot nicer and cleaner. Everywhere, because it's such a small country. We're heading over to the Monte Carlo Casino right now. So far, our first impressions are not that great. I'm sure it'll look nicer and be cooler, but mostly of what we're seeing is kind of somewhat run down. Some of the storefronts, you'll find framed pictures of the prince and princess. Kara can give you a little bit more backstory to them. Maybe later. <laughs> 
now we're in a way nicer part of Monaco. Just kind of the first spot where we get dropped off at from the train. The neighborhood did not look that clean. But now as we get closer to the Monte Carlo Casino, it looks way nicer. So it looks like they're setting up for some type of event. Okay, so right now we're gonna attempt to get inside the Monte Carlo Casino. You can get inside the atrium right now, but the rest of it is closed, except for the little place where you can get drinks at right behind us. Just finished up inside the Monte Carlo Casino and walked around the atrium. It was impressive, but it wasn't the most beautiful place I've ever been in. Like, it wasn't that amazing. So we learned that only outsiders or foreigners of Monaco are allowed to gamble inside the Monte Carlo Casino. You can't be a resident here and gamble inside there. Now the next thing to do is find somewhere to eat. We just overlooked the harbor now. We took the lift down to get some food. En so as you're walking through Monaco, there's multiple streets that are part of the F1 Formula race here. And it's interesting where you can see the pavement changing from a part where it's not on the track to where it is on the technical track. All right, we found a steak and shake here in Monaco, and now we're gonna go to the Saint Devote Chapel in Monaco, and then I think we're gonna head over to the palace after. background about the royal family of Monaco. The palace is behind me. Right now there is Prince Albert and Princess Charlene and they got married I think in like 2004 and she was from South Africa and she's an Olympic swimmer. So her wedding pictures she's like crying like wiping away a tear so people think that she didn't want to marry him. They have twins now and some people think that she's being kept here against her will allegedly meaning that she only like comes out for public engagements and she might not even live in Monaco. Prince Albert also has two illegitimate children, but they're not recognized as heirs to the throne. Basically, they think that Albert is like, she's like in a contract marriage and she can't get out and like she's looked very sickly and that's kind of it. So I think our time in Monaco is pretty much done. We're gonna head back to the train station and go back to Nice. Super helpful because Monaco is really on the side of a mountain. It's really nice having all these escalators to help you get up so you don't have to walk up hills and such. 
Also interesting fact about Monaco is one of the only three city-states left in the world or principalities. The other two city-states are the Vatican and Singapore. And that wrapped up our day in Menton and Monaco. We'll see you in the next video as we explore more of the south of France.